Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R440 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in this video series as a whole, we're going to cover CPUs, memory, drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. We're going to show you how to install VMware, how to install Windows Server. We're going to show you how to do mass updates, how to just up update your BIOS or just update your iTrack, plus a whole bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R440 server. Well, let's hop in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on processors. So the uh, R440 has two CPU sockets. It's an LGA3647 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon first and second gen scalable processors, which means that's uh, Intel Silver 4100, 4200, uh, Intel Gold, uh, uh, 5100, 5200, 6100, 6200, and Intel Platinum 8100 and 8200 series. So yes, there's a ton of processors uh, that will go inside the R440 series. If you go to our uh, website and you're trying to build one out, uh, to buy one and custom build one. Uh, we try to put as many options as we can. So if there's something that uh, you don't see on there, just message our sales team. We can definitely add it for you. Uh, we can pretty much do all the processors for them, but it's just really hard and it's not, it's like an eyesore when you look at the whole list. There's just so many of them, uh, but that means there's a lot of great options and we'll get to that in a second because people ask us all the time, hey, what do you recommend? What are the processors that you like? And we've kind of broken it down into some different categories and it really kind of depends on the application that you're using. And, and so what we'll look at it as as far as like the low end CPUs that'll be more budget friendly, the value CPUs that are still budget friendly, but are gonna be a little more expensive, better performance. And then we have the high end CPUs which are gonna be uh, not as budget friendly and they're going to uh, be just uh, awesome performance, right? Um, and even now the, uh, the high performance ones uh, that are the uh, more expensive ones aren't as uh, crazy expensive as when they first came out. Uh, now that uh, at this point in time, the fourth uh, gen scalable procs are out, second gen scalable procs have come down in pricing. Um, so you can still get some pretty good deals actually on some of the high end one. So let's start with the low end. Well, there's three that we like for the low end. That's gonna be the uh, Intel Silver uh, first gen scalable procs for all three of them. That's gonna be the 4110, 4114 and the 4116. That's going to be a 2.1, 2.2, and 2.1, and then be 8, 10, and 12 core. All these are very, very budget friendly, um, and they're going to be a great proxy. You can throw two of them in and get uh, still great performance overall for your uh, 440, and just not break the bank. So now let's hop into some of the value CPUs we recommend. Well, there's three that we like for the value, and they're all gonna be Intel first-gen golds, and that's gonna be your 6126, your 6132, and your 6142. Those are all gonna be 2.6 gigahertz, and that's gonna be 12, 14, and 16 cores. So all these are great options, still very bu budget-friendly, and, and when you think about it, you could drop two 16 cores in and get 32 cores out of your uh, R440, and it's still at a very, 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 very good price point overall, and now we'll go ahead and hop into some of the ones that aren't as budget friendly but are still actually come down quite a bit in pricing and that's uh, going to be our high-end CPUs. All right, so there's three that we like for the uh, high-end ones, and that's going to be uh, all three are going to be Intel scalable second-gen golds. And that's going to be our 6240R, our 6242R, and our 6248R. That's going to be 2.4, 3.1, and 3.0 gigahertz, and that's going to be 24-core, uh, 20-core, and 24-core. So again, all three of these are uh, great options. And again, when we're talking about putting two into a machine, the next thing you know, you got 48 cores in here, um, and that's you know pretty amazing for a 14th gen server. So when you think about that compared to like say a 16th gen server, which is what is uh, out right now from Dell, and I know there'll be new, new generations down the line when people are seeing this, but um, as of right now, that's the newest generation. So a 16th gen server could be you know tens of thousands of dollars uh, to get something like that as far as that kind of a configuration. And if you get that with a 440, it might end up costing you, you know, five to six grand and yeah the performance isn't going to be the same as a 16th gen but you can get a, a really great machine uh, for a substantially cheaper price and that is the the you know great part about uh, getting a used uh, r440 server as a whole or a 640 or 740xd uh, the 14th gen really is a great sweet spot right now uh, for a lot of customers out there that don't need the most robust server um, they still want something that has a great performance but they don't need the latest and greatest and don't need to pay for all the bells and whistles this is a, a very very good option as a whole. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually show you how to install it and remove your old processor if you were doing an upgrade. 
All right, so I put my ESD gear on so we are safe to work inside our machine. So I want to lay out first everything that you will need for this upgrade. So here's our CPUs uh, that we are going to be installing. I have extra space in the tray for the ones we're taking out as well. Uh, you're going to need a T30 bit. This is not your normal Phillips head. Uh, you could technically put in a T25 and it'll work. It's going to be a little bit loose and you'll have the potential of stripping your screws. So you really don't want to, but it would work if you're in a, a tight jam. But the T30 is the, uh, the right bit for you and what you'll need to remove the heat sinks. What we're going to need uh, is some thermal grease to put onto our new CPUs that we are installing. And then I have a rag just in case uh, the old CPUs we're pulling out is a mess and we also need to clean um, the, uh, the old thermal paste or the old thermal grease off of the bottom of the heat sink so that we can put our new one on. Um, so there's a, a few things that we might need this for. So that's it. That's all we're going to need. So let's hop in and let's do it. So uh, make sure your latch is set to unlock, pop the top, lift the the uh, lid off just like any Dell server you've been in before. One thing I did want to note um, that I thought was uh, interesting and strange at the same time. This is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. CPU 1 has 10 DIMM slots and CPU 2 has six. That's, that's kind of strange, right? Normally you would see like an eight and eight configuration, but in this case it is uh, 10 and six. And the, uh, the strange part is, is they also have six memory channels on each, but because of that, that makes uh, CPU one have a very, again, wonky configuration because there's uh, three memory channels um, on each side that uh, it's just like it's strange. So it's, you know, one DIMM per channel, then two, then two, and then one DIMM, and then two, and then two. It's just, again, it's a strange configuration to get you to the 10. And then over here, all of them are their own memory channel. So um, again, it's just kind of a strange uh, deal. So I understand people being confused when they go, okay, where do I install my modules? Well, that's what we're here to do is uh, to show you how to do that um, in this series. Um, in this video, we're going to show you the CPU, but uh, in the next video when we're doing memory, we will show you that. Uh, but I wanted to show you that while we're talking about the CPUs because, again, it's just so strange. The other thing that's important is the heat sinks are different. So uh, let's just say you already have uh, CPU one installed and you're doing an upgrade and you're going to put a second CPU in and you go to buy a heat sink, make sure you are buying heat sink two for your R440, otherwise you'll end up with the wrong one and they are not interchangeable. So I just wanted to point that out as well because that is a common mistake uh, that people can make out there. Uh, so again, that's uh, just some of the strange features of the R440, but I do love this machine as a whole. Um, I'm a big fan of the Dell 14th gen, the 440, the, uh, the 640. These are some of my personal favorite machines to build and to use as a whole. So, all right, now in order to access uh, CPU one, which is where we're gonna start, you're gonna need to remove your air baffle. So we're just gonna pull this out. And then you'll notice you have two screws here, which we are going to need our T30 bit that we mentioned. So we're just going to go ahead and get this un done here. And one thing I always like to point out, I like to use the manual screwdrivers. You can use an electric screwdriver, but I just feel like you get a better feel for the board when you're using uh, a manual screwdriver and you can just really feel like when the tension's coming off when it's done. And I just don't want to strip uh, the screws, so I just want to be as careful as possible, and that's one of the ways that I personally like to do it. Uh, next thing that we're going to do after we've got the screws out, you have two blue tabs that we need to push in, okay? So we're going to push these in to loosen these up, and then when we do that, your CPU is actually attached to the heatsink, okay? So you just need to make sure you just pull this straight up so that you're not potentially damaging uh, any of the uh, the CPU pins. But because there are over 3,000 pins, uh, they made it easier for us to use the uh, this black clip that we're gonna show you in just a second to help you line everything up perfectly and make sure that you get your CPU in there. So now how do you remove this? Well, that's a question that some people have. I always like to take my hand and put it under it just in case the CPU is going to, uh, it has a potential to fall, but there are these black clips that you're going to just start uh, moving over. This one pops out that way, and you're just going to keep pushing them out until your CPU comes out, okay? And then you'll notice there's the thermal paste that we were talking about that we'll need to clean off here in a second, so I'm going to set this down over here. And then there's, it's really not too bad. There's only a little bit on here, but still I want to get this all cleaned off of our uh, heat sink and, uh, and get everything prepared for the new CPU upgrade. All right, so I want to start by showing you how to remove your CPU from the clip. So really, this point right here and this point right here, there's two plastic clips that kind of lock it down. 
you just kind of bend the uh, plastic just back a little bit enough that it removes the CPU or the CPU can pop out and once one side is out it becomes easy to just take the other side and pull it out. Now I'm going to take this and put this into my uh, CPU tray over here. And then um, it's not bad, there's just a little bit of thermal paste. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean uh, my clip here real quick off screen just so I don't knock any of it into uh, these exposed CPU pins here. All right, and then we're going to clean our heat sink, which I'm going to again do off screen just so that we don't accidentally have any flake off into our exposed CPU pin. So now that we're all set here, we're going to take our new CPU right here, and we are going to get this installed onto the black clip. So people go, okay, how do I do this? What's the best way to do this? Well, there's a nice little helpful guide of triangles. So we're getting into the shapes. So all right, the gold triangle right here, okay, that gold triangle on the uh, the corner, it's very small, um, so hopefully you can see it, but this triangle lets you know where to install onto your um, black uh, plastic clip right here, and that also will appear again um, right here to let you know where to line that up onto your heatsink, and then guess what? It appears again on the motherboard, there's the uh, white um, triangle right there. And so everything just kind of lines up. So you're just going to basically be following the triangles moving forward. So the same way that we took this out, we're going to kind of slide this under that little black clip. And then we're going to come back to the other side and kind of bend it back just enough to, to lock it in. And you can see, I like to flip it over first to make sure that it's into place. And you just have to be careful because of all the capacitors and uh, resistors, transistors, all this down here just to be safe. So um, now that we got this locked in, before we install it, we need to put on a little bit of our wonderfully messy thermal paste. So let's get our tube of thermal paste out here. And you really don't have to put that much on. We like to just put um, a small little bit right in the middle, okay? That actually might be a little much, but that's it. That's all you really have to do is just put a little bit in there. And then when you put it onto the heat sink, you can use one of the, uh, the little plastic pieces. Some people like to spread it around, but when you put it on the heat sink, it'll just smush it together and spread it around nice and evenly for you. So again, what are we going to do now is we are going to line up our triangle. So our triangle on the plastic right here, there's a little carved out uh, notch. There's our triangle right here. So let's just go ahead and line all of these up and push this into place. Let's get this all clipped in. So all right, now our heat sink is installed to the CPU. It's all firmly in there. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna line up our triangles again. So let's swing this around and this will be the way that it's lined up. When we line this up, you'll have uh, the pegs right here that will go in to our holes and then you will have the blue clips that will come into these squares, okay? So let's go ahead and again line this all up, come down nice and evenly. And just like that, that we have installed our uh, CPU upgrade. So now we're gonna uh, get our T30 back in and we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Again, I this is one of the reasons I really like just the regular old man manual one is you can really get a good feel for it on the board and it and how much tension and how tight the uh, heat sink is to the board. And once you feel it just lock into place, there it is right there. All right, so just like that, we have installed our CPU and removed our old one. We'll go ahead and do the second one in a second off screen, but that's how easy it is to do. And if you're looking for any CPU upgrades, we offer a ton of Intel scalable, or if you're just looking for upgrades as a whole for memory, uh, SSDs, you want a custom built server, we do Dell, we do HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we do new, we do use. We would love the opportunity to earn your home labs business or your data center's business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. If you've made this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks, guys. Take care.